Good evening. Welcome to tonight's On the Edge with me, Theo Chalmers. Tonight's show is two hours long and live, so if you have any questions for our guests during the show, text them to 8778 with the word EDGE, a space, and then your name, location, and your message. And we'll try to pick up on any that really hit the mark. They're all charged at standard rate, so why not get ready to text? Tonight's show is hopefully going to be something of a roller coaster conspiracy fest. So please hold on to your seats. I'll be talking with a very special guest, a researcher, broadcaster, and investigator who has thrown light into some very dark corners and who famously predicted the exact date of 9 11. He's been on my show before, on the line from his home in Austin, Texas, talking about uh, Nibiru or Planet X. But tonight, however, he is here live in the studio. You may know him from his legendary online channel, The Freeman Perspective, Freeman Radio and Freeman TV. He is, surprisingly, Freeman. What a show we've got tonight. <laughs> Welcome. Thank you, Theo. Good to see you in the flesh. Well, it's wonderful to be here. Good. England so, has been right and proper. <laughs> fantastic. So um, I think we should do a little bit of background. So tell me about yourself um, and how you got involved in these kind of uh, areas of research. Absolutely. Uh, it's been a little odd for me. Uh, I had a strange imagination as a child, thought about UFOs, thought about ancient astronauts, pyramids, and things of this nature. Was always interested in that. Uh, finally, I, I made my way to college uh, with some ideas and thoughts in my head about how different the world might be, and I was introduced to Freemasonry. And uh, what do you mean you were introduced to it? Then? Well, a friend of mine started to explain to me, well, have you ever seen this symbol? And it was the compass square and G of Freemasonry. Oh. And I thought to myself, well, why? I really know that symbol. That looks very familiar. Why do I know this? And when I returned home, it dawned on me that my father, I used to wear his cufflinks as spaceman insignia when I was a child, <laughs> and they were the compass square and G. So I found out then that my father was worshipful master of a Kaiserslautern Lodge in Bavaria. Uh, he was from California, he's not German, but he was the worshipful master, which is like the king of a lodge. So did, were you living then in Germany? No, 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 he had, uh, well, my father, being a worshipful master in the lodge, uh, went on to uh, chase flying saucers in Project Blue Book. Uh, he built nuclear missiles, and that's when I was born, and so uh, we were in Florida. But, so was he... I don't understand why he would be the, the master, the worshipful master of a lodge in Bavaria if you were living in California or Florida. Right, and honestly, I don't have that half of the story. Uh, oh. it, it all had to do with his wartime. He was, uh, you know, military through and through. He went through the Navy and then the Air Force and uh, was on Killer One submarine with Jimmy Carter. Well, uh, that is a nuclear submarine. It was the first nuclear submarine. Killer One. Killer One. <laughs> Subtle, isn't it? What's yeah. your mission statement? Killer yeah, absolutely. One. Absolutely. Okay. But so if you, uh, if you show the image of my dad, uh, you'll see... Yeah, let's have a look at number one. Uh, you'll see what I was, I was starting to come into he's, a revelation He's the chap of. at the top there. That's he? right. And that's him with his uh, full worshipful master garb. And mm -hmm. this is the, the attire worn inside of a Masonic lodge. Uh, most especially for a worshipful master, he has uh, the top hat and the big uh, necklace and all of the, the gavel and... He's the one that runs the rituals inside of the lodge. Mm -hmm. So if you're at a Freemasonic lodge, they go through different levels, but if you're at the, the top level, everyone will be at that top level. But inside of the lodge, there are stations. And so basically, he was king of the lodge. And, and these, these items around his photograph, these are his actual things, are they? That Absolutely. You, that you've now got? or Yes. Your yes. mother? Or? Yeah. No, they were bequeathed to me, and I have all of that. Uh, which includes, if you'll see there, like wine, corn, and oil, which they use to cast spirits into buildings. Oh, uh, those three little bottles at exactly. the bottom of that picture. Can we have that picture again? Those three little bottles at the bottom left there, in that case, they're wine... Corn and oil. Corn. What would you mean corn? Like pieces of corn? Or? Uh, yeah, yeah, exactly. And you cast spirits? You would cast spirits as you would uh, lay the cornerstones for the building. They do a proper ceremony. And then they'll cast uh, these wine, corn, and oil to, to bring about proper spirits. Is this an ancient Egyptian thing, do you think? It really is. Uh, the deeper I got into understanding Freemasonry, the more I came to Kabbalism. Let me just rewind you a tiny bit there. Sure. The reason that you were left all these things, is it, is it because your father saw for you a role in Freemasonry? He had hoped. Uh, now, Freemasonry is unable to recruit. 
Now, this is you part of the spiritual you, nature. Yes, yeah, so you must come of your own free will and accord. And, and you must believe in a, in a single God. These are the only two requirements. And that because then you swear allegiance, and, and there's terrible things that happen to you if you break your vow of silence. I can tell you the oath if you want to know it. Uh, Do you want to say it? Oh, I don't mind. Uh, if it's quick? It's simply the first, first degree. Now, there's, you know, 32. But the first degree would be to bind yourself under an oath of penalty. Uh, no less than to cut your throat across, have your tongue ripped out by its roots and buried at the rough sands of the sea at low water mark where the tide ebbs and flows twice in 24 hours, should you ever knowingly or willingly violate your oath or obligation as a, an entered apprentice Freemason. And that's the first degree. And then, but your father was 33rd degree. He was 32nd degree, but worshipful master. Oh, but isn't the there another degree above then? Yes, is a degree that is an honorary degree that's typically granted. Uh, you must be selected to be in the 33rd. Okay. Uh, it's curious who has made it to the 33rd. Uh, Arnold Palmer, uh, John Glenn, uh, MacArthur. Well, uh, well, yeah, several astronauts. Apparently the moon landing astronauts were... Uh, Makes sense, is that correct? I was at the Temple of the 33rd, the Supreme Mother Council of the World, which is 13 blocks from the Capitol in D.C., in the District of Columbia. And they have there, encased in glass, the flag of the Supreme Council that uh, Buzz Aldrin brought back from the moon. They did actually raise a Mason's flag on the moon, didn't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. I've heard. Assuming, of course, that they went, because, exactly. as you may know, we have done <laughs> programs that suggest they didn't go. I sometimes think they did go, they did a Masonic ritual, they just didn't want you to know about it. So the film was a hoax, but the, the ride was real. Well, the film was, I, I think, pretty certainly a hoax, wasn't Yes, it? yes. So, okay, um, so, uh, you, you know, you went to university, you were interested in esoteric subjects. Where yes. did we go from here? Well, I studied ancient architecture at university, uh, studying Egypt and the Manoans up in the Greece and on into the cathedrals, which I've been having a lovely time reviewing around here. Uh, and I started to notice encoded symbolism in many of these buildings and then also in many of the, not just the architecture, but symbolic meanings in corporate logos. Uh, what I discovered was that Freemasonry was essentially Kabbalism. So if you want to go to the second image. Um, Let's go to the second image. I'm sorry, or third. Third, third image. image. Uh, the idea of Kabbalism. The one with the statues on it. Third image, that's the one. Yes. Now, this right here is the home of Ray Mabus, and we'll get to him later. In the back is the pyramid of, in Memphis, Tennessee, which is a sports arena. But what you see here is the passing down of this knowledge. What has happened is there was a knowledge in ancient Egypt, and it was passed to Moses. And this knowledge then became known as the Kabbalah. Now, according to Kabbalah, Moses went to the mountain three times to speak with God, to speak with the burning bush. Uh, and on the third time, he was receiving the soul of the law, which is Kabbalah. I, I'm sorry to interrupt you there, but sure. I, I thought the burning bush was something that happened somewhere else, apart from up the mountain, when he was receiving the tablets from God. Is that not right? No, no. They actually uh, followed a UFO to the mountain, and Moses went up the mountain, and this is where they gave him the stones. Now, what had happened was that God told Mo uh, Moses the exact proportions to build the Ark of the Covenant. Right. Now, this is a perfect electromagnetic conducting device. Once you study that with its gold acacia wood and the way that it was set and up. There's two angels on the top. The cherubim on top were yes. basically the antenna. And inside of this was called the Shekinah, which was the voice of God that would speak to them and also lay waste to their enemies. And so uh, what we find is if you find the whole story in Kabbalism, you find Moses comes down the mountain the first time the stones don't work. He has to go back. He comes back down the mountain this time, and this time the stones radiate, and from that point on, he has to wear a veil. They place these stones in this perfect electromagnetic conductor, and then they carry it around as a weapon that they have to keep wrapped up in hides. And when they unveil it, it would then take out their uh, opposing army. What with what? Radiation or, well, or electricity? Many or? people think so. Uh, if you read Graham Hancock, he tells the tale of how they, they stole the cut arc. And each king would say, open it and show me the rod of Aaron, and show me the stones, you know, from God. And they would die of this withering disease with strange sores losing their hair and whatnot. Well, it's radiation sickness. Exactly. Uh, there is, I, I have had a guest on this program called Alan Wilson, a researcher who uh, is quite convinced that the Ark of the Covenant is buried in Wales. Oh, really? But uh, perhaps that's... Well, time. it all fits. It all fits because the story we're going to tell tonight goes deep into the Templars. And Templarism, you know, is the precursor to the Freemasonry we know today. And so the whole idea of the Templars going to the Temple Mount and then leaving with something 
and then they becoming... dug underneath it, didn't mm -hmm. they? And, and there were some tunnels and... and yes, and they got something because next thing you know, every king, queen, or, or prince, uh, potentate wants to become part of this lodge, part of this esoteric order. Didn't they have a speaking head? And they Was did have a speaking Baphomet? head, the Baphomet, absolutely. Uh, and what we find is that maybe we're looking at high technology, maybe that the ancient past that we think we know of isn't right, and that we're looking, at, like, as a study of ancient architecture, I know, uh, you know, it's taught at university that Egypt's history runs backwards. We start with a high civilization, with mathematics, building giant pyramids, to precision that we won't even attempt today. Now, why did they have it at such precision? Most think because it's an engineered device. It's actually a, a geomancy, it's a, it's earth It's a crystalline magic. structure as well, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. is crystalline, or limestone is crystalline. Exactly, exactly. And if you look into your computer, you'll find that it's the quartz crystal that gives you your speed. It's the subterranean gases, silicon and gold. All the same uh, compartments, only so massive that we can't see the pyramids as a device. And they used to have a gold top, didn't they? That's right. Well, that was coming again in Y2K when the Masons tried to cap the pyramid with gold. But that was canceled after the jet crashed. Uh, we can get to that as well. This is the Air Egypt jet. Yes, yes. Uh, Flight 990, also known as Thothmosis III. This is the one that just went straight down. Exactly. Somebody turned the fuel pump off. Well, that's what... Uh, they, they actually classified it as a pilot suicide. Uh, this was before terrorists, and so therefore uh, they, they claimed it was a pilot suicide because he called out a Muslim prayer as the jet went crashing into the ocean. Of course, with 33 Egyptian military and a scientist from Jet Propulsion's laboratory on board heading to the Giza Plateau prior to the capping of the Great Pyramid with gold. Hmm. Yes. Now, this is where okay. it gets curious. <laughs> it's getting okay. good already. We so haven't got any we... texts yet. I don't think the texts are working. Uh, maybe speaking too fast. <laughs> <laughs> Well, here's the curious part. So we start to understand our ancient past a little bit more. We start to get deeper and deeper and realize that we have a high-tech civilization that we have no history of. Uh, we have the tales of Atlantis, Lemuria, and the ancient civilizations that mostly the Masons speak about. Uh, well, when we find out that when they, they built the Ark of the Covenant, they then had to house it. They had to get rid of this thing, and so they, <laughs> they brought this man, King Harem of Tyre, to come and help King Solomon build the, the Solomon's temple to house the Ark of the Covenant, to mm -hmm. keep the she Shekinah locked inside. Mm -hmm. Well, if you read Zechariah Sitchin in his uh, 12th planet or Genesis Revisited, there's one simple sentence where he states that King Hiram of Tyre was one of the people taken off planet. Now, there was Enoch, there was Ezekiel, but then also King Hiram of Tyre. Now, everyone wonders... The Bible described it as something else. He didn't say off they never, No, yes. Uh, well, the, the description is very incredible, and even an astrophysicist has designed Ezekiel's device and said it was aeronaut aeronautically viable. So, depends on what you read the, in the Bible, right? You know, everyone has their own particular interpretations, and because we've been left without the knowledge of the ancient past, we can't put... But now, as we start to come, and Zechariah Sitchin steps forth and rewrites Genesis... Then we say, wow, that might be genetic manipulation they're talking about when they created Adam and And they Eve. talk about giants and, and, giants, and seeing course. human women and mating with them and strange stuff like that. Well, yes, absolutely. Genesis 6, you know, the giants, the sons of God came and had sex with the, the humans of, yeah, of Earth. Or, yeah, however you want to read it that. It does challenge those who believe the Bible is a literal document, doesn't it, rather? Well, it all depends on what you get out of it. People interpret things into the Bible, so they read, uh, you know, Lucifer, and they think that that means Satan. This is because they've been told this over and over and over again. But if you were one that just went into the Bible, opened it up, and looked for Lucifer, you would never find this description everyone told you. It doesn't exist. Yeah. There is no connection to Lucifer and Satan in the Bible. That's all made up. But there is a connection between Lucifer and the Illuminati, isn't there? Absolutely. <laughs> And so what I was trying to say is that um, everyone is curious who the man is. When you go into a Masonic ritual, you then perform a death and resurrection ritual as a man known as Hiram Abiff. This is the thing with the, the noose around your neck. Yes, it? exactly. And the, and the oath. And you go through, you're blindfolded, you're, you're brought around, you do a circambulation around the altar, and then you're brought down before the Bible, and you are then presented Venus after you're resurrected. Which Venus, of course, if you look up in the dictionary, is Lucifer. But yeah, because he's the brightest of the planets. Yes, and was always known as Lucifer. But this strange man, Hiram Abiff, who you're playing to be, 
is the one that came and helped uh, Hiram of Tyre build Solomon's temple. And so now there's potential extraterrestrial routes to Hiram Abiff, the man you are pretending to be, the very first master mason, the man who carried the secret word that the masons now want. So I didn't know this. You're saying that the first mason of the Freemasons, if you like, mm -hmm. uh, was actually not an, was not a, an Egyptian. No. Was a, was a Hebrew. He was, uh, he was a man that came along with King Hiram of Tyre. Oh, so he was a Tyrian. Yeah, right. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> okay. And uh, therefore uh, established and built this perfect, you know, they electroplated the walls of, elect of King Solomon's temple and then left the Levites outside to guard it. Uh, anyone who got anywhere near it died. And so this was a perfect housing center for this high technology that no one understood. How do you know they electroplated the walls? That's some... This is well known. There's uh, the Baghdad battery. I was going to say the Baghdad batteries. So, uh, so they know that they had lead acid batteries. In absolutely. Those, in those days, because they found them and they're thousands of years old. And they had to contain this electromagnetic device, which they called the Shekinah. So this was in some sort of uh, Faraday cage then? Or exactly, something. exactly. I mean, as we start to look at pyramids and, and structures at, on another level, uh, Tijuanacan has a sheet of mica that's 300 feet long. We could not move that today without it breaking. It came from hundreds of miles away. And then it's under the floor. It's not even a decorative thing. This is in where? In Tijuanacan, in, in, uh, in Mexico. It's really? not even no, a decoration. I've not heard about this. This is part of what? Some temple It's, a, it's a, the uh, Pyramid of the Moon. Oh, okay. And, and it's under the floor, under the rocks, under the flooring. And what we use mica for today is to cool our computer components. So once you realize they're running off of gold, water, silicon, quartz crystals, we're looking at geomantic or ge uh, earth magic or earth technology devices, however you want to take it. You know, at one level, it was all magic. But now we look at it as technology. So we're talking about ancient technologies. Yes. And your take on those ancient technologies, assuming that that's correct, is, is that the, this was technology brought to Earth? No. This is technology from the ancient civilization that was wiped out to a, to a master mass of catastrophe. These are the people who lived in Atlantis and Lemuria exactly. and, and these places. Yes. And, that, and the, where the, the flood comes from. The, exactly. In yes. every culture and certainly around the Mediterranean. And many believe that it was Venus that came into the solar system and caused the catastrophe, and that was Lucifer, you know, the great dark one that came and destroyed everything. Why a dark one if it's so bright? Well, yeah, that's why Lucifer was known as bright star, yes. Uh, uh, but you know, dark in that it destroyed life on planet Earth and most likely life on planet Mars. But obviously life exists, uh, carried on. I mean, there were people who had the stories, who told the tales. Absolutely. And many of them tell the tales of going underground, going uh, you know, subterranean, and coming up later after things had cleared. Uh, there were those, again, with Zechariah Sitchin's work, saying that, you know, was like Noah, who was helped by the gods. But most, uh, you know, the Mayans, the Hopi, they all talk about coming up from underground. And then they also speak of uh, subterranean reptilian beings uh, along with that. So were they saved then by aliens and if they were saved by aliens some people then why wasn't the venus you know diverted and well they weren't saved by aliens uh, most of they you know even noah or upanishads in, in the mayan or the babylonian were not supposed to survive uh, this was something that a rogue uh, deity if you will uh, did enki came along and allowed humanity to survive enki yes oh yes i've heard of that <clears throat> enki so um there are, are we talking here about alien tribes, different races of aliens that are perhaps, uh, I don't want to use the word middling because it could be that we're them, but they're, they're, they're involved in human society in some way and they have different agendas. Absolutely, yes. And we can start to see that and it gets very curious. I don't know which picture. Here. Which one? Uh, okay. Should we show uh, that little film? Well, uh, we well let me that? show the device. Uh, uh, well, look, okay, so... Is this the one you want to show? We, we can... We kind of covered that. We can skip that. Okay. Um, because what, what's showing there are, are the, the ideas, the anomalies in, that we have, like Baalbek, Lebanon. There is a structure there with 300 ton stones. And that address stones, aren't they? I... Well, they're, they're just blocked and, and perfectly placed. Yeah. The thing is, we can't move them. 
we have two cranes in the world that can lift some of the uh, blocks used in the pyramids, which are much smaller, much, much smaller than the ones of Baalbek, Lebanon. Yeah. We can't touch the stones of Baalbek, Lebanon. But yet here the structure stands staring us in the face, and we have to explain it. So these have been, these have been cut from the, the bedrock in quarries. Yes. Dressed. Yes, yes, exactly. I mean, if you want to throw the picture up, you can see that little woman. That's picture number four. Picture four. That's the one with the sort of little, um, I've seen this picture before, the spaceship thing. That's, that's, well, that's off the painting, isn't it? That's well, the medieval the painting. yeah. Here we go. Uh, so if you see that little lady uh, next to the man from uh, uh, <laughs> the... Uh, the alien. The... the Easter Island man. You see the Easter Island face there? Oh, where is he? Uh, the big, goofy-looking guy in the front. Oh, the one in the front, yeah, with the sort of... Uh... Do you see that little lady standing next to him? Way in the bottom. Oh, tiny, yeah, yes. she's standing on one of those dressed stones. That is the stone. That's how big it is. That gives you, that's one that they didn't finish. That was still left in the quarry, which was also 100 miles away. Impossible to move, impossible for us to do anything with. It's, it's incredible, isn't it? It is incredible. I mean, you know. We that, have to explain it. We have to understand our you ancient couldn't, past. You, you couldn't move that using uh, logs. No. And rolling it. <laughs> No. You, didn't, you wouldn't get it on the log, would you? No, we couldn't possibly move such a thing. And that's 300 tons. Yes. Yeah, it's, um, it's so we start to get to the idea that architecture, art, and artwork, uh, and sacred geometry actually have a function within our uh, life cycle. And they have a, an ability to generate uh, what we consider magic. And ideas of subtle frequencies being manipulated is really what we're looking at. Okay. So things that we didn't understand, like electromagnetism, were magic back in the day when you could make two things move with magnets or whatnot. Mm. Uh, but the, the power of electromagnetic, <laughs> electromagneticism, that's all right, I need more water. Electromagnetism. Uh, yes. <laughs> um, is something that we are now coming in to understand. You know, it's coming into so many play, uh, like our HARP facility, the, you know, the uh, Atenaray in Gatona, the, Alaska. Uh, yeah, the auroral, what is this, the high something? Um, it's the High Frequency Active Auroral Research Program. Yeah, which is in Alaska, yeah. And it, uh, this is the American government's uh, earthquake machine, isn't it? It is, it is claimed to be that. Uh, actually, Milosevic in the USA Today accused the U.S. of using it to cause earthquakes in the Middle East. I mean, that was on the front page of the paper. Harp technology is used to create earthquakes. Um, most said, well, Milosevic's just saying that. Uh, and they're all 8.6, aren't they, on the Richter scale? You know, I hadn't noticed that. I hadn't noticed Apparently that. Apparently a lot of the, well, I don't know, I'm just reading the same kind of stuff that you read, I'm sure. And I've read that a lot of recent earthquakes all around the world have been all exactly the same intensity. Uh, it, it wouldn't surprise me. It wouldn't surprise me at all. And a lot of the things that we're seeing that we think are weather anomalies are actually, you know, manipulation. Yeah. Um, but to get to that film, the, the thing that I had recognized now was that Kabbalism was Freemasonry. Freemasonry is Kabbalism. Uh, King Solomon was known as a wizard. He was known as a, a practicer of magic, and he actually called upon many demons and then would, would assign a, a sigil or a magic talisman to bind them. Mm -hmm. Now, to us today, this seems quite odd and strange, and we've never believed in such a thing, but there are so many grimoires and ancient documents of this That's high a, magic. Uh, this is a book of spells, a grimoire, yes, isn't exactly. it? Yes, exactly. And in one, that is King Solomon's, is the lesser keys of King Solomon. Known, it's known as Goetic magic, or Goetia. And it's considered the lowest, most base form of magic possible. What it is, is to call upon demons and then use them. And, and this is considered crass by many magicians. Even Aleister Crowley didn't think Goetia was worth his time. Really? Well, because he was above it? He had other magic that was better magic? Exactly. Yeah, he was uh, feeling like he was in contact uh, with higher beings, so he, he was, didn't need to mess with these lowly demons. He, he was the man who said, do what thou wilt is all of the law. Yes, it? exactly. Anyway, we're going to go for a break now. If you'd like to text in your questions or, uh, or comments for Freeman, why not do so now to 8778 with the word edge, and then your text. See you very soon. Welcome back to On the Edge with me, Theo Chalmers, and my special guest, Freeman, uh, all the way from Austin, Texas. Um, this is getting intense, isn't it, Freeman? <laughs> We've <laughs> done one section. So, um, I don't know where to get back into it, really. We were talking about esoteric things of the past, 
How do those things link into the modern day then? Exactly. That's, that's the big question. And that's the, the crux of this whole thing is that we understand civilization as, uh, well, we believe it's just the outcome of human endeavor, that this is what humans would normally build. But as you begin a conspiracy research, you start to notice that there is uh, a few esoteric orders that are in charge of things. And Freemasonry, of course, being number one. It's odd, isn't it, that society thinks it's okay to have secret societies. You know, I, when I'm saying society, I mean, like, people generally think it's okay or are taught to think it's okay that, that there are people who are members of secret organizations with secret agendas who are in some positions of power. Yes. And that's okay because they do good work. Exactly. Exactly. And, and their agenda is what we're concerned with, right? And so we want to understand their religion and their thoughts and where they come from. And what is Freemasonry and, and why? You know, why? And, and as we discover, like in America, 51% of our presidents all belong to Freemasonry. That's over half the presidents belonging, belonging to a single fraternity. Well, many of them belong to Skull and Bones as well. And then they? you add in that level, exactly. And then you've got, the, the, you've got chapels of Freemasonry in places like the Vatican. Yes, yes. It's, it's endless, uh, no matter where you go. And, and so as we were talking about Solomon's Temple and how that relates to the Freemasonic ritual, uh, Solomon being a, a magi, a magician, that cast demons and then used sigils to bind them. Uh, you better explain sigils. Okay, sigils. Well, let's let's go to that picture. Let's go to that 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 picture, that circular. That's it. Okay, so what you're seeing there on your right or left uh, is the the seal of Solomon to bind spirits. Now, this was his main seal. After he had cast 72 different demons, he then bound them with separate sigils. But this one bound them all. Okay, and what's the symbolism here? I mean, I can see the male symbol, but that's the only one that I recognize. Well, it's very esoteric, and <laughs> that's the thing. Uh, it takes quite a bit of knowledge and a lot of study to become a magician. It is not a flight of fancy. It's something that has a very deep, deep meaning in an ancient science that I don't, you know, we, we don't fully understand. Uh, when you say we, there are people who do understand you. I would think that there are sorcerers out there, magicians who are worth their ilk. Uh, actually, uh, I can name a few. Uh, <laughs> I've had on my show, uh, like uh, the Twin Tower architect, uh, Paul Laffoley. He is a magician that designs time machines. So when people start looking into magic, they don't realize, like I went and met the high priest of the Church of Satan, Rex Church, and he's building a device that opens a portal for the old ones to enter. Is he really called Rex Church? Yes, yes. His parents were actually <laughs> Satanists. Rex so he's means a generational. king and church. Well, that's quite obvious. Yeah, he's a generational Satanist, so his parents were Satanists as well. Uh, but the, the concept is, is that the magic is high tech. You know, they take it to that next level. We're all thinking, you know, oh, witches, casting spells or whatnot. But CERN would be a better a representation of, of this magic. This is the nuclear collider in the Swiss Alps. Exactly, whose logo just happens to be 666. But we'll get to that in just a second. Okay, should we, should we, are we ready for that film? Well, I was going to show you that what we're looking at, okay. if Let's we could back, throw that up. Can we have that image again that, that we just had on, please? Because what we're looking at here is, is this sigil, this uh, magical talisman to bind spirits. Now, over to the right of that, what you're looking at in the, in the white and brown, that is uh, the park out in front of the Nashville Capitol in Tennessee. Now, if you'll see, I moved the park over to the sigil, to the Seal of Solomon, and it's an exact match. Uh, even the cross arms are represented. Every portion of that Seal of Solomon is, is represented there. So, so what you're saying is, obviously, Nashville is a relatively modern city, isn't it? Yes. So what you're saying is that this is living on, this occult knowledge is living on and being reproduced in secret but in plain view. Exactly. So, so whoever built this park knew full well what they were doing. Now, interestingly, Nashville, of course, is the home of American music, isn't it? Yeah, country music. Well, certainly country music, but also, I mean, the music industry in America, to yes, some extent, yes, yes, yes. was based there and yes. has been based there. Absolutely. Well, certainly the kind Elvis. of... Elvis. Yeah, well, <laughs> Elvis, absolutely, Sun Studios and so on. Um, so, uh, what does it mean that these people are doing this? So, why, you know... Well, this actual seal act is, is sitting upon a Native American burial ground. And so it actually states that there are thousands of bodies interred there. So if you want to have a look at it, and then we'll, we'll have a, a talk about it. If you we'll want watch the film. Should yeah. we watch that, that short film?
I'm going to say oh, that. Right? <laughs> I wonder if that's going to be the case with all the videos. Yeah. Um, well, that's okay. So what I'm saying now is basically that what we look at as subtle frequencies, we now understand the electromagnetic spectrum, but do we understand the soul spectrum, the spirit spectrum? And are there devices that we can use to manipulate that? Yeah, I mean, it often amazes me that how limited our ability to perceive spectra are. Mm -hmm. You know, because we can only see very narrow, and there's all this other stuff going on in microwaves and, and, and heat and so on that we can't see, that we're just blind to. Maybe all stuff is going on all around us all the time that we just don't know about. Yes, yes. Are I mean, you suggesting that? I am suggesting that they have a technology that, that deals in an even more subtle frequency than electricity or electromagnetism that goes to the soul. Yeah. And so now they've laid the seal of Solomon to bind spirits on top of a Native American burial ground. They have bound these, these spirits, these energies, these entities down there. And if we follow the Freemasons and we follow these secret societies uh, on their trips across to America and, and many other places, they always subjugate and kill off the Native peoples. You know, obviously the founding fathers, you know, passed smallpox to all the Native Americans. Uh, or, you know, that's what um, supposedly the first uh, use of, of bioweapons. I think that's what, yeah, I think the British are quite famous for doing stuff like that, really, in our empire. It's not the benevolent thing we were taught at school, really, is it? No, no. So uh, this is interesting because, uh, you know, if, if you take that thought and then go back to looking at um, perhaps aliens having visited Earth and interacted with us, why wouldn't they just kill us all off? Right, right. Well, perhaps they did. Perhaps they did. And we're them. Well, that's when we start to get into genealogies. That's when we start to, uh, what is that next shot? The next shot is... Uh, oh, we're getting the corporate logos. Okay. Uh, yeah, we won't go there, then. Because we, uh, the idea of genetic memory is something that has been intriguing me all my life. Because it has been shown, and I don't know if you want to call out that picture with the wolf on it, um, it has been shown that genetic memory is a provably scientific fact. That mm -hmm. what happens is you can have a chick come out of an egg and show it a predator and it will know that predator without ever having seen one before in its life. It will react to it. I think the best example of that is um, cuckoos. Uh -huh. You know, how do cuckoos know that they're cuckoos? <laughs> yeah. That they should mate with a cuckoo when they've been brought up by, you know, some other bird. Yeah. How do they know that they're a cuckoo and that they exactly. should then go and lay their egg in, a in another bird's nest and so on and so forth? And things that we couldn't possibly know. Uh, I didn't know if they got the We're not getting that image. Oh, it's an That's image. okay. Do we know what number it is? No. It's okay. Okay. Uh, but the, the concept is that uh, we are passing this genetic memory along. And so I personally think that I was coming to understandings like I did because of my bloodline, because of my family. Uh, and then, therefore, now I have a, a, a quicker catch to understand things. Mm -hmm. And this would explain why the ancient Egyptians had sex with their sisters and mothers, or why the royalty, the monarchy, has to keep it all in the blood. Well, my understanding was that they did that to maintain power, because if no one else could marry their sister and then claim to be king, or no one else could marry their mother and then claim to be sick king, right. so the only way to make sure that didn't happen was by having a, a, a wedding, a marriage, and then they were married. They were already taken. That's, that was my understanding of that. Well, that's what we consider a rational, reasonable explanation to things. Somewhat yeah. irrational, <laughs> rational, but yeah. But we start to get to some strange anomalies uh, of, of lineage uh, where we'll find uh, that Bush is related to Marilyn Monroe, Hillary's related to uh, uh, Angelina Jolie, Brad Pitt's related to uh, Obama, uh, McCain's related to Britney Spears, and you start to wonder, you know, well, what's going on? Why are all these singular bloodlines being in charge? And, why are, and, and perhaps we are correct in that it's only a matter of property or keeping property within the family. But what we find is that the sorcerers, the magicians, the ones that are doing the dark rituals, and these are your leaders. I mean, these are, you know, Masonic people that practice these high ritual occult uh, rituals. So the ritual is used to bring in a spirit. The ritual is used to make contact with another entity, an outside entity. What made Aleister Crowley so famous was that he contacted an entity known as a wasp. 
and, and channeled the Book of the Law. And that book is housed at the UT campus where in Austin, Texas, where I live. Uh, and this is what made Aleister Crowley famous, was because he had made contact with that being. He had some interesting party tricks, didn't he? And I, I remember reading that he, he could walk along a road behind somebody who wasn't aware he was there, and then duck down, and the person walking in front of him would, would duck down as well, without realizing why. <laughs> Makes me think of Darren Brown. <laughs> <laughs> Well, the whole thing is to be able to channel these, other, channel these other entities. This is what theosophy was about, many of the esoteric arts. It's in, and so if you have, it's becoming obvious or, or known that uh, DNA receptors uh, and the light re frequencies that we're receiving are actually like antenna. And so, so particular DNA receptors would retain their information. And this is what I believe is the reason they have uh, sex with their sisters, is to keep the DNA pure not the, the money. But isn't, isn't one of the reasons that mankind doesn't mate with its siblings because you have genetic Anomalies. problems? Well, you have like, diseases, hereditary diseases thrown up far more readily. Yes. I, I mean, there are groups of people, aren't they, religious sects and so on, that do a lot of that in breeding. Yes. And they end up with, you know, things like very bad eyesight or, you know, hereditary diseases and that kind of thing. Evolutionary, uh, it makes no sense. But we have been supplanted with a system. A system has been placed upon us that uh, is not human. And that's really where I start coming from, is that civilization is not human. If we look at it, it's not structured to, to cure to the human at all. You mean, it, you mean if we were all to say, all right, let's start again, let's structure society, but haven't people tried? They've tried communism and capitalism and... Once again, you're, you keep going isms. back to the same uh, occult orders that are doing this. And they actually are working polarities. And so they actually, you'll find that, you know, the Freemasons fomented the, the French Revolution. They fomented the American Revolution. They are constantly pitting uh, polarities against each other. And, and I know Prescott Bush, for instance, who was George H.W. Bush's father and George W. Bush's grandfather, right. financed Adolf Hitler. Yes. In the Absolutely. Second World War. Um, but wasn't that just about money and power? Well, no, uh, because once you start realizing what Hitler was into, you look into things like the Brotherhood of the Bell, their ideas of hyperdimensionality, the seeking of Shambhala, uh, the ancient uh, technologies that they were seeking and flying saucers that they were building. Uh, they had a much bigger ideal. It was a religion. It was, it was a, a full belief system, not just a, a political or military uh, idea. Uh -huh. It was this whole concept of being divine beings. And so, you know, when you start looking into Himmler and the ones in the SS that are getting into the deep occult, then you start to realize, no, that's not what it was all about. There is a, a larger story. Uh, if we start getting into corporate logos, okay, which actually would be the next image. Let's there. go to image seven, then. Now, this was really part of my awakening. Um, now, what had happened to me was... I started recognizing Masonic meaning in every corporate logo I saw. And I started classifying them all. And I've outlined and updated every corporate logo of any major corporation that you can. You're, 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 uh, we haven't got the image up yet, but let's, let's just start talking about them as though they're there. So, so what we're saying is that the images are, of these successful companies, are linked to uh, esoteric symbolism absolutely Signs all of, of these all of these symbols i can identify and classify within masonic ritual well let's look at the virgin logo for instance it's just text right what's what's masonic about that well the uh your virgin is our eye in the pyramid you know uh, over in america we've got time warner running all of our trains and cables and telephones and here we have virgin i noticed mm -hmm. um now, this is a very, very interesting and intriguing tale that really b brought me out into the open and also made my first film, uh, so which is on the goddess Columbia. Mm -hmm. Now, of course, in Britain, we call her Britannia. Yes. Uh, what we find is this concept of Isis, Horus, and Osiris, and all of many of the, the logos that you'll see. The reason Hitler canted the swastika goes back to Iris, Osiris, Isis, and Horus. You mean why it was at an angle, it wasn't square? Exactly. But, but you, I'm sorry to push you on this, but no. what is, you know, what is um, esoteric about the Virgin logo? Well, the, the, just the Virgin itself. 
Well, the idea of the Virgin. Yes. I mean, the, it's the name, not the, not the logo necessarily. Right. Well, the V is very symbolic for them, and we'll get to the V. Okay. Uh, and that would be why the V is so prominent. But, of course, it's virgin. But they think about these type of things. And I know that it seems kind of uh, like you could just pick and choose. But if, if you started with, say, ABC, NBC, CBS, and all their logos. They, yeah, they use a lot of sun symbolism, don't they? Well, ABC has no logo. It's just the word, or the letters ABC. Yeah. Now, this is the Trinity again. And so the Trinity goes back to Osiris, Isis, and Horus. Uh, then when you get to CBS, that's Columbia Broadcasting Systems, and their symbol is the eye. Yes, it now, is. Isis was known as the eye goddess, and, uh, and this eye goddess is carried through time. Is this like the eye on the top of the pyramid? Exactly. Which is on the one dollar bill? Which in Hebrew means the devil. Well, uh, the, uh, each, each letter in the, in the Hebrew alphabet has a correlating number and a tarot card in Kabbalah. So the eye in, in Kabbalism is the devil card. Uh, so you're looking at a symbol of the devil in Kabbalism, and they are Kabbalists, so therefore it is a symbol of the devil. Uh, and then NBC, of course, is the peacock, which goes to Juno, which is the, the Roman version of this same goddess. And that's why they use the peacock, because of the eye symbolism again. Oh, because they, 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 there are what look like eyes on the tail feathers of a peacock, aren't Exactly. So then I started going through all the different corporate logos, gas stations especially, and it was this goddess, the Venus, the Virgin that, that uh, clued me in to many of the symbols and signs. Because in Austin, Texas, we have a large statue to the goddess and her angel wings. And it was placed there in 1933 by the Freemasons as a war memorial. And it's known a Freemason architecture. And this is, uh, stands in front of the obelisk and in between the dome and the obelisk in the capital of, of Texas. And to her right is a shell and to her left is a pentagram. And these are, of course, Texaco and Shell. Uh, now, what we see in these symbols are symbols of Venus. Now, Venus is shown rising from the sea in the shell. And then when viewed from Earth, Venus makes a pentagram every eight years. All oh, right. So we see the signs, and it was even the, the Da Vinci Code, but he did, never completed the story, right? You'll get the whole story in my Columbia film. Uh, so as you see there, then Texaco and, and, and Shell are both symbols of Venus. And uh, you could go along with Starbucks. Now, Starbucks logo with the goddess, uh, fish goddess with the uh, pentagram over her head. This is the same symbolism, once again, of the fish goddess. But the, the it's interesting like, it's thing... It's just like the, the hat that the Pope wears, which looks like the head of a fish. Exactly, like the cult of Dagon or Oans, who actually goes to St. John, who the, worship, uh, the Freemasons worship. Uh, the idea of the Skyla, or the, the siren of, of, of Starbucks, is the idea of the concept of having sex with these merfolk, because they knew that there was a crossbreeding with merfolk from ancient Atlantis, this but they like couldn't explain mermaids, how. This is like mermaids, is it? This is like sea people. Exactly. Exactly. Do they exist? Well, that's going to be the question for this show. Well, let's ask it then. All right. Well, that's, <laughs> that's next on the list, I think. Okay. So... Yeah, that was the whole concept of this, and I honestly, I can go through every corporate logo and tell you these things. Uh, and then I started using this knowledge to uh, predict world events. Now, this is where it gets interesting. So, as I'm awakening, I'm awakening to Waco. I'm awakening to the Oklahoma City bombing. I'm finding that this is all just madness and, and totally contrived. From my opinion, right from the get-go, I didn't believe it. No. Uh, you know, to have these people murdered in front of me, burnt, you know, burnt down, and... I, it was too much for me. So I was awakening to this new concept of, you know, an evil government, which many people are starting to come to the realization of. Uh, and it was at this point when they brought Bill Clinton in front of us and then uh, impeached him for having sex with his secretary. Mm. Okay, now what they had done was bring this man of the people, the saxophone playing, David Letterman loving, uh, man of the people, and then brought him down for a crime that most people didn't consider was even worthy. And they're like, well, Hillary's kind of cold anyway, you know. Uh, I heard all kinds of stories of this nature. But people were going, well, why? Why are they impeaching this man? Now, I myself was looking at the puzzle and saying, well, they don't do this. Many presidents have had affairs. They do not bring well, you up. JFK out. famously had affairs with many, many women. With, with George Bush's cousin. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, Marilyn Monroe? Exactly. Uh, so... Uh, so I knew that there was a reason, a contrivance for why they were bringing this man out in front of us and making him turn purple by talking about insertions of cigars and such, uh, that this was psychological warfare. This was the preparation of World War III. The first thing they needed to do was defeat our hearts. This was their goal. And so they brought this man of the people and then they tore him down for a, violent, uh, or a crime that no one thought was even worthy of impeachment. 
uh, this was psychological warfare. And when I saw that, I said, okay, well, if they're going to bring down the man, what's the next step? And I said, well, obviously, force a president into office so that we begin to lose faith in the system itself. Now, I started to hear tales of this W. Mm -hmm. Now, do we have the W image? Uh, sorry to... Which one is that, do you know? Uh, it should be next. Oh, no. Oh, got some more oh, symbols. Oh, okay. the VW, yes, 10. ten. Number 10. My apologies. I thought ten, it was ten, ten. next. No. Oh, we're not going to get that. Okay, let's just talk about it anyway. Okay. Uh, so, as I started to... Oh, no, that's not the one, is it? No. <laughs> no, it's one with the VW symbol at the top. Well, th that's their bloodlines, by the way, that way, you know, we, we skipped oh, over. Right. There we go. Okay, so I'm coming into my understanding that we're dealing with Freemasonry, which means we're dealing with Kabbalism, which means we're dealing with Hebrew, uh -huh. because Kabbalism is all based in Hebrew. Uh, and as I outlined and classified all the different corporate logos, and then I'm looking for this man they're going to force into office, I hear the rumblings of a W. Mm -hmm. And at that same time, I'm trying to decode Philip 66. Because if I had decoded every other corporate logo I'd seen, but I didn't know what 66 was in Kabbalism. So very simply, I opened a magician's dictionary and I looked it up. <laughs> and it turned out to be the number of the dark side. It's the number of the evil. It's the number of the fallen angels. Or kill off, it, it says. In magic, they call it the kill off. Kill off, is yeah. it? How you pronounce it? Okay. So these were Lilith uh, and Azrael and all of the fallen angels that are listed in, say, the Book of Enoch. Mm -hmm. And and this is what the number sixty-six meant. Well, in Hebrew, six equals V, not like Roman. Mm -hmm. So in Hebrew, six is V. So when I saw the 66, I understood the meaning of the dark side, and then I hear the coming of W, well, 66 six makes VV, which is W. Mm -hmm. So I and then put this together, and I said, W will be forced into office. And this took me a few more layers in my understanding, because when I looked at the Volkswagen logo, I realized it wasn't three Vs, but two Vs interlaced. Yeah. And this was, of course, Hitler's war machine. Well, when you take two V's and you interlace them, you make three V's, which, of course, equals 666 in Kabbalism. And, of course, you'll see the same symbolism behind George Bush's head and the Woodrow Wilson Center, who was a 33rd degree Freemason. Oh, right, Woodrow Wilson, a another president. Exactly. And the one that brought about the, the uh, Federal Reserve. The Federal Reserve. Well, we've done a few programs on, on banking. Um, yeah, we're not even get the symbolism of the dollar. Forget it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Take, take us all day. So, um, let's, so you predicted that, that George W. Bush would be forced upon us, or forced upon the American people at least, exactly. uh, by a court of law, which is what happened. Exactly. Because this was the psychological warfare necessary to further defeat our hearts. Now, I concluded that with W. will be railroaded into office, and he will be the last American president, because the next step was to get rid of the Constitution. And that will come up uh, when we get to Obama. Okay. Uh, so even in Star Wars, now, even in, uh, in many of our Hollywood films, we find that all of this is encoded and, and practically broadcast straight at us. Some believe that they broadcast it straight to us because they want us to be able to say, well, you saw that in a movie. But some of us believe that this is being broadcast to us because we must submit of our own free will and accord. So, so we have to say accept it because we've seen it and we accept it and therefore it's, they told us. Exactly. Uh, we, di we didn't do it sneakily, we told you. That's, yes. the, that's the argument, isn't it? The entire 9-11 scenario was in The Lone Gunman and yep. the entire collapse of America in Star Wars. Freeman, we're going to go for another break now. Once again, if you'd like to text in your questions or comments for Freeman, please do so now and see you back here soon. Welcome back to On the Edge with me, Theo Chalmers, and my special guest, Freeman. Uh, well, I'm pleased to tell everybody that texts are now working. We've had a few technical problems tonight, as you probably guessed. Um, I have hundreds of texts coming in. Unfortunately, because there are so many, they're whizzing off the screen before I get a chance to read them. Um, uh, here's a question from Brenda in Hull. Are the Masons and the Illuminati the same? That is a, a very interesting question. Yes, what, what happened was that there was a man, Anthony J. Hilder, 
and he began using the Illuminati as a catch-all phrase for all the secret societies. And so what happened now is there's a big confusion because there is the Bavarian Illuminati that was founded on May 1st, 1776 by Adam Weishaupt. Which is an organization called the Illuminati. Exactly. Which, of course, their symbol was the eye on the pyramid, just as it is on our dollar bill. And this was shown in their documentation prior to it ever showing up in America. So um, there is a question of a connection there. But uh, the confusion comes in when people think that because the Illuminati is now a catch-all phrase. And so you always have to explain, well, we're talking about one sect or we're talking about the... I, I collectively call them the Brotherhood just to keep it... Uh, well, straight. okay, well, let, let's drive down through this for a second then. I mean, are you saying that your research shows that there is a secret world government that you could call the Illuminati and that are heavily involved with masonry, Freemasonry? Absolutely. That's, and that's... doing dark rituals behind locked doors. So it's not just about power, and it's not just about money. No. It's about dark rituals. Yes. Um, Can I give you an example? Yes, please do. Uh, this, is, this is one that tends to strike home. Uh, when we looked at, now, America put Saddam Hussein in power. And this is known. This has been the news and everything that we know that Saddam Hussein was placed there by the Americans to fight, uh, you know, the Russians against Kuwaitis and all of those, and he was placed. Well, Saddam Hussein then started announcing that he was Nebuchadnezzar reincarnated. And, of course, he was, he was on top of Babylon, wasn't he? He, he was, was rebuilding ancient. Babylon, yes, exactly. <laughs> and rebuilding Nebuchadnezzar's palace. With his with hieroglyph on it, wasn't he? Exactly, it? exactly. So here's this man that America put in power in Iraq that's saying he's Nebuchadnezzar reincarnated, having all this masonry made to him. And we come in and we strike him with a, with a warfare campaign known as the shock and awe. Yes. Okay, well, you ask any Freemason what the Shekinah or Shekinah is, they'll tell you it is the cloud, the invisible cloud of brotherhood that surrounds the Masonic altar. And as I was telling you earlier with the Ark of the Covenant, that is the voice of God that surrounded the Ark of the Covenant that they had to build Solomon's temple to house. This is this nuclear force or whatever that Whatever was it might there. be. They called it the Shekinah. Well, the Shekinah was a play on that word. So the Shekinah also known as rapid dominance, came down and struck Saddam Hussein, who was Nebuchadnezzar, using the mother of all bombs, which they called the Moab. Yeah. And it was the Moabites that took out Nebuchadnezzar. And it was Nebuchadnezzar in the Bible who was Lucifer. So they just cannot resist allegory, symbolism, and reference well, would, to ancient knowledge. Well, I would say it's ritual, not warfare. It was begun on uh, the vernal equinox, which is a day when the dead and the, and the living combine, according to their esoteric beliefs. And then it ended on Walshburgus night, which was the end of this, uh, this time zone. And it they had a massive when... blood slaughter in the middle, uh, which they did code, I mean, with these. So when you say ended, this is when mission accomplished was declared by <laughs> yes. Bush on the aircraft carrier. Exactly. Well, the end of the shock and awe campaign. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, yes, I believe that it is absolute ritual and not warfare at all. That things are placed up to set up to foment the type of energy that they need so that then they can have a blood sacrifice of men in ritual garb. You know, the military garb is all ritual with your pentagrams and everything that you wear, uh, the inverted pentagram on your uh, badge of honor, you know, things of this nature. Uh, and then they're sacrificed. Now, I've spoken with Masons in their lodges, and they were trying to convince me to join, and they would tell me stories of how when they were in the military, they were sent to other places than their troops, and they were spared when the others died because they had on their Masonic ring, because they were saved by those in, in the higher-ups who led them out of the fray. Uh, and tales of Masons that have helped enemies because they are brothers, because they are, you know, they told you this? They told me this in the lodge, yes. When trying to convince me to join. They're like, well, don't you want to join? You so know? Was, was Saddam Hussein <laughs> not a Mason then? I don't know. You know, he, he was another level. He was Saddam, you know, he was Nebuchadnezzar reincarnated. Uh, so this was another level. But this is just an example of what I'm talking about. So being able to predict W, being forced into office, because it was a symbolic gesture of the, of the 66. And even in Star Wars, they use that same symbolism. So you, you're saying, let me just recap then, you're saying that, that um, the powers that be, uh, first of all, wanted to destroy a president mm -hmm. for very little reason, just to 
just to have a, a psychological warfare on the people. So they attacked Clinton exactly. for having some sort of sex with Monica Lewinsky. Right. Um, and then they forced a president into office who hadn't won that because the, the Supreme Court said, we're not going to have a recount. And they made it quite and they did, obvious. And they did this in Florida, which was controlled by his brother, exactly. who was the, the uh, governor of Florida. Which was the conspiracy everyone was supposed to grab on. Like, that was the one they wanted you to be mad about. It, the, the, the thing was planned long before. But the American people didn't make a big fuss about it, did they? And, and Gore, Al Gore, who was later rewarded with, a, with a, an Oscar <laughs> yes. and a Nobel Peace Prize, yes. um, and millions of dollars, tens of millions of dollars, uh, didn't make a fuss, did he? No. The, the so-called Gore loser, as they called him. So they, they've, they've um, undermined the president in two ways here, or the presidency in two different ways. What was next in the plan, then? What was your assumption of what would be next? Well, as I had said, W would be forced into office and he'd be the last American president. Because what I felt would be next would be a, a president coming in that was not a natural-born citizen. So did you think that would be Arnold Schwarzenegger then? I did, <laughs> yes. I really did. Uh, the Arnold Bill and all of that. And, of course, the people behind this uh, non-natural born citizen act that was passed or brought to the House were Hillary and Barack Obama. They were the senators pushing the non-natural citizen act. And, of course, you know, uh, Schwarzenegger, I mean, he comes from Austria, which is where some other famous uh, ruler came from. Yes, exactly. And, and you know, his, his father was SS. Uh, yeah, and, you know, when we find, figure out that the Bush line, you know, helped and funded the Nazis, our governor of California, uh, you know, related to Nazis, the, the Pope, uh, Benedict, was a, was a Nazi, Nazi youth, youth from yeah. Bavaria, who was investigating the Illuminati and the Templars before, while he was head of Inquisition, when he was still cardinal. And then now, now they've come out, the Vatican has stated that they are exonerating the Knights Templar. Now, this was very curious because there were a couple of symbolic gestures. One was that um, Pope Benedict met W at the White House on 1013, October 13th. Mm -hmm. This is a symbolic date of the Templars. It was 1013, 1307, or October 13th, 1307. Friday the 13th. Friday the 13th, the day that the Templars fell. So it became the most unlucky day. Well, so the Pope met W at, at the White House on 1013, and the White House cornerstone is dated to 1013. Chris Carter's X-Files production company is 1013. And the, uh, I could go on, uh, Fatima occurred on 1013. Nero took Rome on 1013. Uh, but on top of that, the White House cornerstone is dated to 1013. And I used all of this, on, uh, and to add one more, uh, the Pope had W visit him at Vatican, and they met in St. John's Tower, who is the patriarch of Freemasonry, uh, on Friday the 13th. And so it was all these 10th, 13th, Friday the 13th symbolic gestures that led me to say, well, there's going to be a major event on 10th, 13th. And so for two years, I predicted this. For two years, I talked about it. You can see it all on my website. And pre-10th, uh, 13th, for two years, I discussed it. And I, there, but it was 9-11. No, 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 no. I predicted 9-11 as well. This yeah. was later. Okay, oh, so 9-11 I, I predicted, but without a, a, an audience. And only my friends, you know, just people around me. I said, hey, there's going to be a major terrorist attack. Now, this was after W was forced into office. The reason being was that during the Clinton era, there, there was a Homeland Security Act where they were trying to form a Homeland Security in America. Every October 1st during the Clinton era, it came up. Every October 1st, it was shot down as the most unconstitutional thing anybody had ever heard. Mm -hmm. Well, so when they railroaded the W into office, I knew that would be the year. I had been expecting in the middle of September each year during the Clinton era, to have a major terrorist event to force this homeland security because I knew they needed about two weeks reaction time and so the middle of September so it would have to happen in September and then in October when this came around they could then put the Patriot Act. everybody would go oh yes and I picked the date of 9-11 because that was the date that HW announced the New World Order for the first time publicly now I know how ritual they are now had I known that the Twin Towers cornerstones were Masonically laid to 9-11, 1970, whatever year they were laid, and the, uh, you can't find that one anymore, but you can go look at the Pentagon cornerstone, and it's dated to 9-11, 1941. So both the targets were also dated Masonically to 9-11. So it's a bit of a uh, given, really, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. 
is it symbolic that it's also the number you dial in America for the emergency I've services? I've wondered about that because then I went in and tried to dig out what the Kabbalistic meaning of this would be. And it, it really is a Luciferian number. It's all doing with the Tree of Life and there are 10 paths on the Tree of Life or 10 uh, stations. And then when you go to 11, you're the magician. So 9 skipping 10 going to 11 is a Luciferian concept because 10 is God. So that's saying man can become God without God. Oh, I see. We're either side of God in this. Yes. Okay, so, so let's talk about... Um... But just to conclude, my 1013 prediction did come true. It was the day that Bernanke and Paulson brought all the CEOs of the banks into there and forced them to sign away their assets. They, they denied it the day before. Paulson and Bernanke were completely, and mostly Paulson were completely against it. But on 1013, they forced them all in there to sign, just as I said they would. Uh, and I'm watching the symbolic gestures. I'm watching the symbolic dates. And I was able, the headline in Austin, Texas was 1013 was bigger than 9-11. But it was, it, this is the day where the no banks smoke. crashed, isn't yeah. it? And I had predicted it for two years. Uh, the date, you know, because I'm watching symbolic gestures. Okay, let's go back to the presidents. Then. All right. Because we've seen a trail here, haven't we? Of, yes. Of symbolism, if you like. Absolutely. Uh, and we've got to d George W. Bush, but... What did you predict would follow George W. Bush? Was the non-American president. So now the question of who is this man, Barack Obama? Uh, if we have that video clip, it's, uh, it one? comes up right after uh, who, is, who is Obama. Who? Uh, it, the facts is what it's called, the facts. Okay. Let's see if we can see that. Uh, let's see. Let's see if it if it comes up. But let's talk about him in the meantime. Okay. So it, he had lots of different uh, personas, didn't he? He had different names. He lived in different countries. Um, he was apparently didn't have dual nationality. Apparently, with Indonesia. Uh, no, to be an Indonesian citizen, you had to to um, uh, reject your American citizenship. Right. Um, and then uh, that would mean that he could then not become an American president because exactly. he, he could become naturalized American again, mm -hmm. but that doesn't qualify you to become president. Yeah. So there are two reasons why possibly he shouldn't be an American president. Am Absolutely. I right? We're going to play the video now. Uh, we can't play the video. Okay, <laughs> no, those aren't going to work. No. Well, hopefully the last one will work because it's the most critical. But we basically covered everything that was in what we were going to show. And that is it, that he was not, he's not viable to be president according to the, the court cases, the Supreme Court cases that have been brought out against him. Now, me, I felt like this was what was intended. Mm -hmm. And so uh, this was what I had predicted would happen. And then he was twice unconstitutionally viable because when he took his oath uh, at the inauguration and he... He got it, it. wrong. You know, what he, the, 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 was it the... Um not the Solicitor General, there was some dignitary that said the words first. Right. And then he copied the words, but right. the words that were said were wrong. Exactly. And then he missed, yeah, he, re he repeated them wrongly. Yes. Uh, which he didn't have to do because he knew it. He had practiced it. He didn't have to follow it wrong. He did just because. So are you saying that he deliberately didn't take the oath? Well, I would say that it seems that way, and yeah, because of what I'm predicting, it would follow my scheme exactly. So not only are you saying, I mean, you are saying that not only is he not a valid American president because he's not an American citizen. Right. Or an American citizen under the wrong terms and conditions. Right. Yes. Um, but that he deliberately took the wrong oath. But then the next day, apparently, he took the oath again in the Oval Office. Right. But it wasn't filmed. Right. And the reason given for him taking the oath again, uh, as I recall, was that he wanted to confound the conspiracy theorists. <laughs> Isn't that funny? And yet they didn't film it. <laughs> yeah. So, did he confound the conspiracy theorists? I don't think so. No, I don't think so either. <laughs> now, the curious part was the quote that they brought out after he was done. Was the one thing he said was, well, yeah, I did it, but I forgot my Bible, but I don't think that really matters. So the, the oddity of bringing that to the public attention, they didn't need to tell us that, you know, but they did. And this, again, is, is once again into this World War III uh, scheme. Yeah, because the Bible he had was something special, wasn't it? The Bible he had on the first occasion... I don't recall. It was like Lincoln's Bible. That's right, or that's right, I think it was. Something like that. It was some very, you know, famous, important... Uh, Bible. Well, there are many symbolic uh, events in this whole inauguration, and 
one being that there was a man, Albert Pike, who outlined all of the, the rituals of Freemasonry. He wrote the book Morals and Dogma. And in that, he, uh, well, he's, he's the one that identified Freemasonry as Kabbalism. He's the one, where, you know, you go read his book and you'll, you'll understand much of the symbolism. Uh, I just want to interrupt there sure. for a second. The Kabbalism thing, I mean, this is the red wristband, isn't it? A bit of string that people like Madonna that, that is, yeah, yeah. are wearing. It's like the uh, kind of trendy religion for uh, celebrities. Well, it's an ancient Hebrew mysticism that has been passed down through generation after generation. Uh, so, yeah, it has become uh, this pop icon. Now, Madonna is no longer Madonna. She is now Esther, who is also one of the ritual goddesses within, within the Eastern Star, which is uh, more of uh, the feminine or female co-masonry or Freemasonry. So you have your Eastern Star, and they, they all worship my mom's Esther in the Eastern Star. She had a ritual spot on the pentagram. Your mother was a Mason. Uh, an Eastern Star. Which uh, is a, what, a group of Masons. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I have heard feminine, that there are... Feminine versions. Yeah. yeah, because they're not allowed to be regular Masons, are they? No, no, no. But they have their Very own unusual. lodges, do they? And yes. With pentagrams on the floor that say fatal in the middle of them, and there are five women sitting on the, fatal. the points. Yeah. It means something in Latin. I don't remember what, but I, I always find it curious that it says fatal inside of that inverted, inverted pentagram, you know? Not fetal. Yeah, no, fatal. <laughs> yeah. Okay. So um, let's go back to uh, Obama then. So let's assume that, you know, he's not uh, the American president. Mm -hmm. Why would they do this? Why would they have a man who is not qualified to be American president, who hasn't taken the oath? What's, what does it mean? They have been pushing for a constitutional convention for many years now. A constitutional convention requires a, a majority of the states to agree that they're ready to open the Constitution for editing. Once this occurs, they are able to edit whatever they like. People so think that they would go in and just edit a certain part, but they are open to editing any portions that they want once this happens. But they, they've already taken away all the constitutional rights in America anyway, haven't they, with the Patriot Act? They have. And, they, they and have. The, the executive orders of George W. Bush. Yeah, I mean, he calls it a GDP paper, right? Uh, so, yes, but symbolically they still need to eradicate this because of the people's hearts are following it. And... And so they really want to destroy us. You know, it's the first art of warfare is to destroy the people's hearts before you destroy them with the bombs. And so what, what they will do with this is foment war not only between atheists and Christians, Muslims and Zionists, but also between uh, patriots and non-patriots or those that are uh, standing against this, uh, well, you know, standing up for the Constitution, trying to, because they're... <laughs> They, they've got everybody agitated on so many levels. When you look at um, oh, oh, people are being thrown in the streets in America. They're all losing their homes and forming tent cities. And the Obamas are throwing million-dollar parties in the White House with Jay-Z and Beyonce. Uh, he made 60, or $600 million on his campaign and sales of books and is sending DVDs to Gordon Brown. Well, when Gordon Brown, Brown visited and gave him... Uh, something made from an anti-slavery ship. Yes. Uh, a truly uniquely historical gift. Then, but in return, he got copies of Star Wars and... Wizard of Oz, Citizen Kane, uh, the, uh, the Godfather, uh, which I don't think were even in PAL format. <laughs> so I don't think even uh, Gordon Brown could watch them over here. He's probably seen them. Yeah, and, the, and, the, and of course, the, the Brown, uh, Mrs. Brown sent over the daughters some lovely necklaces and, and dresses, and they sent back a plastic model of Marine One <laughs> from the gift shop at the White House. You know. What is Marine One? Uh, the, the helicopter that uh, Bush flew off of at the end of the year inauguration. It's the, the, the president's helicopter. So it's deliberate, isn't it? Hey, absolutely. Why Symbolic it, gestures. Why are these gestures? Why are they making these gestures? Well, I think they want uh, to get Britain mad at America. They're making us look cheap, you know, and they're making us uh, appear... We've been cast into the world as the Satanist. You know, if you look at all of our stars or, you know, whoever's at the top of our list, they're typically pretty bad uh, as far as uh, role models go. But, but surely if, if the powers that be, the Illuminati or whatever, control the UK and control America, why would, it, you know, the British government be mad at America? Not the government, the people. Oh, it's for it's, the people. It's for us. It's for us. 9-11 was for us. 
It was for our reaction. And so, and so insulting the British Prime Minister is for us as well. Right, so that you're now mad at us. Uh, it's the same story here with the MPs and their, their money crisis. I mean, come on, everybody bucks the system. Everybody's, you know, and now they're going to come out and tell you about it. It was the same with when, when first they had destroyed the man, then the system. Then they came out and said all your ministers are pedophiles. You know, they're deserve, destroying every reason you have to believe in something. And that's their real goal. That's the goal of the, the end game, is to first destroy your heart and destroy whatever you have to believe in. Okay, so what's, you know, what's, the, what's the next stage? I mean, you've been predicting all these things. Yes. Uh, well, as we looked into Obama and his, his recent talk at Cairo, trying to uh, make pleasant with the Muslims, uh, we, we realized, okay, there was Albert Pike. He wrote a letter to Mazzini, who was uh, head of the mafia and also a P2 Mason. Uh, and he's, he this outlined... This is in Sicily, is it? Yes. He outlined the, the three world wars in this lecture, in this, in this letter. So uh, he outlined perfectly the first and second war, exactly how it would go. And this is in advance of the first and second yes. war? Yes. And then he also outlined the third, which hadn't occurred. And now what he oh, said... Oh, well, you're saying that they had occurred then when he wrote about them? No, 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 no. These were in the 1700s, 1800s, oh. when okay. Albert Pike wrote this. Okay. Uh, and then, so the Third World War was to be fomented first by having the atheists versus the Christians. So what happened at the Obama inauguration was no minister, that there were three prayers given, but no minister was allowed to call the name of Jesus. All right? Uh, the idea was that they didn't want to upset the atheists. So when uh, Gene Robinson, the first homosexual cardinal, uh, comes out and says, O oh Lord of many understandings, that's what he called God. And then Rick Warren comes out and he says, Oh, the Lord of all nations, amen. And then... Uh, that could be a president, couldn't it? Yeah, well, uh, you know, amen is, is the god of the Egyptians, the sun deity, you know? So our Lord of all nations, amen. amen -otep. Yes, exactly. And that was why Akhenaten changed his name from Ak Amon to Akhenaten, uh, because he had did, done away with the cult of Amon and is going to the cult of Aten. And that actually plays into this whole story of Barack Obama. So what we see now is they're fomenting this idea. That they, the, uh, so in the next step, of course, was to get between the Muslims and the Zionists. And so this leads to my prediction. And what, what is going on now is that Obama has come out and said, well, my Muslim faith. Uh, are we coming up on a break? We are coming up on a break. All right, let's catch this on the other side. No, no, we're not ready for it yet. Okay. Like a, well, so, ten seconds. so the, the thing is, is that uh, Obama's been on the air saying, my Muslim faith. Uh, his name, actually, Barack, is the name of Muhammad's horse when he returns. <laughs> uh, in, in, <laughs> and talking of returning, we're going to go for another break now. Once again, if you'd like to text in your questions or comments to Freeman, why not do so now while it's working? Just text 8778 with the word edge, and then your text. See you back here very soon. <music> Welcome back to On the Edge with me, Theo Chalmers, and my special guest, Freeman. Uh, just before the break, we were talking about your prediction for... Barack Obama uh, and what his name means and who he really is and what he symbolizes. There's, there's a very interesting story going on here, and we won't have enough time to show it all, but you can go and check it out on FreemanTV.com. FreemanTV.com. Uh, and and what, we, what we find is that the name Barack, if you were to go to the Bible and look up, and Satan fell like lightning, it would say, and Satan fell like Barack. If you play the words, yes, we can, in reverse, it will say, thank you, Satan, very clearly, <laughs> very clearly. And if you, uh, and he rides around in the beast. That's his Hummer. I oh, know it's a Chrysler, isn't it? Yes, yes. So these to me are symbolic gestures. These are symbols that they're using to, to bring about this end of the world script, as it were. Uh, uh, aren't they also selling off uh, masonry, uh, masons temples? Or? Yes. Uh, what do they call them? Not temples. They... Yeah, they're the temples or lodges. Lodges, yeah. yeah. They're, they're not they are selling them off across That's America. That's absolutely right. And not because numbers of masons are falling. That's what they'll say. But I believe it's due to liquidating their assets because America is about to fall. And they know this. But, uh, so what we're looking at is a coming space war. 
And this is big. Yes. Now, my prediction is on the 4th of July, of perhaps this year, next year. Okay, it was probably this year. See, now the thing is, I'm watching symbolic dates. This is next month. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that the Vatican will go and take the Temple Mount back on the 4th of July. The Vatican? Absolutely. Not the Jewish nation, not Israel, the state no. of Israel. Yeah, well, it, it could come through Israel, but I believe it's going to be the Vatican. I'm not sure, you know, I don't, I didn't know that the Twin Towers were going to fall on 9-11. I knew they needed a terrorist attack on that date. Now I'm looking at the Temple Mount for the 4th of July. Uh, and that is my next symbolic date and symbolic gesture. And I have many reasons to outline why the 4th of July, uh, the Freedom Tower cornerstone, which is now the One World Tower, it's dated the 4th of July, just as I was saying, the Twin Towers and the Pentagon and the White House all have the symbolic dates. Uh, the 4th of July will be the event at the Temple Mount that sparks this World War III. That's but, what I believe. Well, that's pretty horrific, isn't it? I mean... Yeah. But it goes it's even stranger. Now, it gets even stranger because what has been going on is now the Pope has come out, well, his uh, priest, uh, Benjamin Foons, who is in charge as a Jesuit priest in charge of the observatory, has come out and said that uh, aliens exist in our space brothers, and they did not suffer from original sin because they weren't born of Eve. Uh, that's a Jesuit priest with the Vatican saying this. That's not me. Uh, they also came out, as I said, and said the Templars were okay. Uh, forget about the, all the horrible things they admitted to doing. Um, what we're looking at now is this coming space war. And what is happening is it was predicted by Werner von Braun, a Nazi scientist that came over on Project Paperclip to start NASA. But what is going on since Obama came into office is NASA is coupling with the DOD. Department of Defense. Exactly. So we are going to a war-based space program, and they have changed the name aptly to Ares, who is Mars, who is the god of war. Yeah, because it's not uh, Star Wars anymore, is it? It's not, sorry, not, uh, what was the defense initiative called? It was called Star Wars, wasn't it? Was it was Star Wars, Short, yes. Yeah. Yeah, this SDI. is Reagan's space exactly. defense. Exactly. And this is all part of it with HARP and, uh, and many of the other things. Um, so, well, what happened to me? Let me just tell you the story how it fell, because it's so miraculous. I am doing a study on Obama and the coming space war, the coupling of the DOD with NASA. I'm following and tracking meteorites that are anomalous, that are causing sonic booms and earthquakes, something that's never happened before. I've been tracking them for a while now on my website and even using uh, earlier ones. But, uh, is this on your blog, which yes. is thefreemanperspective.blogspot.com? Exactly. Uh, and so what had happened was that uh, Werner von Braun, this Nazi scientist, said that well, they're going to use the, co the Cold War to start the, the space program, start this whole militarization of space. Then they're going to go to terrorists to, to help carry this forward and get the world ready. And then we'll go to asteroids. And then asteroids will be followed by extraterrestrials. Werner von Braun said this. Absolutely. I mean, he's now dead a long time, isn't yes. he? Yes. But he has a lady, Carol Rosen, that is, is carrying his charge. And she's outlining all of these things. So in January, I'm talking about this, and I'm saying, okay, they're making this war, and they're going to use an asteroid to, to force this uh, weaponization of space, the coupling of the DOD with NASA, but also the Russia-China alliance. It's not just us, right? Uh, so what has happened and then... Are you saying that Russia and China are in the same bed with the powers that be that are in America and Britain? And Yes, because the story goes extraterrestrial, and it gets much deeper in who is connected with what, and how that all plays out. But you will find that uh, Russia and China will be launching to the Mars Phobos, Mar uh, Mars' moon Phobos. There's two, isn't there? Phobos and Demon. Phobos and Demos. Uh, De fear, fear and Fright. Is Demon. What Demos. 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 Okay. Yeah, Fear and Fright is what they mean. And the curious thing about uh, the moons of Mars is that neither one of them were spotted uh, until 1877. And that just happens to be the year they put Cleopatra's needle up in downtown London and put the 24-inch rule of time of the Freemason symbol underneath it. So that was marking the arrival of Mars's moons, whether uh, they know it or not. But there's a whole story about Mars and Atlantis that we could get to, but we won't. Uh, but the space war, now as I started to track this story and realize what was going on, there was the other story that was going on, and it was the unification of religion. So the Pope was bringing all the religions together, and they had that big meeting, and, and now Obama trying to, to get all these uh, religions together. And there was one man in the ancient past who tried to do this as well, who was Akhenaten. And it was mostly actually his mother, Queen T, who was running this whole show. 
So once I started into the Obama Space War story, I got sidetracked in the fact that Akhenaten and Obama look very much alike. Uh, and so I started to do artwork showing Obama. I took his Time magazine photo and I put it on Akhenaten's face. But then I found out that Akhenaten's mother, the true ruler, okay, because Akhenaten was overshadowed by his mom, and that was Queen T. T-I-Y-E, isn't it? Yes, exactly. And I, so I took Michelle Obama's high school photo and I put it on, on Queen T. And we're going to show you this. But then we found out that Akhenaten had two daughters by Queen Nefertiti. And they both, or, well, they had six daughters, but two became pharaohs themselves. And so they're depicted in the artwork with Akhenaten and Nefertiti. And, These are in statues. Aren't yes, and Estella. Mm -hmm. And I took the, the, the statues and I put the faces of the daughters on them. And the stella is a, is, a, is a stone monument, isn't it? Like a, like a standing stone. Exactly, just a, a face carving. Um, and and the, the other two things within that picture were the sun's rays, which was this god, Aten, which the, uh, if we could go to the picture of Apophis, uh, that has the snake deity on there. So Akhenaten had created this, uh, this solar religion, yeah, yeah. and so the solar serpent was Aten, and that was uh, with the rays coming down. And then he created a Satan, which was Apophis. And this was the dark, evil lord that always tried to kill mm -hmm. a ten. Uh, so when we looked at, if you could go to the Stella, I don't know, did I give you that one? Um, of the, that's okay. Uh, when you looked at the picture, you found that, that the other two things in the image were the rays of the sun and the rose buds or the rose flowers that they were given. Mm -hmm. So then the Secret Service gave the Obamas code names. And they were Renegade, Rosebud, Radiance, and Renaissance. And so Renegade means that he turns against his party. This is the definition. One who turns against his party, his religion, and everything else. That's what Renegade means. Mm -hmm. If you go to Renaissance, it means rebirth, uh, re, uh, uh, reincarnation. Mm -hmm. And if you look at Bud and Radiance, then we're looking at the other two images in the Akhenaten Stella. So we have the entire Obama family coded into this Stella of Akhenaten. Maybe we should look at the video. Let's watch that video. We've been building up to this video. Let's do it. Well, um, they are remarkably similar. Isn't that odd? That is unbelievably sim sim similar. What are the chances of that, do you think? Well, let's throw in that one other image of uh, genetic uh, mutation of mummies. Uh, do you see that uh, still shot? I don't know. Mm -hmm. It should be the next one. There we go. Well, it, <laughs> now, as an ancient astronaut researcher, I've known all my life that there is a special property to mummification that saves a viable cell a cell proper for cloning. Now, they even just came out on a History Channel explaining how they could clone mummies and how they would maybe clone uh, cryogenically frozen people if the world ever ended. Uh, it was the days after people. Well, so knowing this and knowing that Lenin is rotting in Red Square at this moment because we cannot mummify. Uh, okay, I, I think we're done with that image. Well, that, that was the, the whole point there was that Tw they have there cloned. is there is viable DNA in Egyptian mummies. They absolutely cloned a 2,400-year-old mummy. Well, we no, don't that, know that. No, no, that's what that news article stated. 1985, they cloned a 2,400-year-old mummy. You mean they cloned its DNA? They didn't make yeah, a yeah, human being. Yeah, yeah, they cloned being. the DNA. Right. They just replicated its DNA, didn't right. they? With uh, what's that called? That process where they uh, they reproduced the DNA. Yes, absolutely. They they, they I mean the, the news article said you know they cloned a mummy. Okay.
So you, it is absolutely viable. Let it me is. just, let's cut to the chase then yes. here, Freeman. What, right. what you're saying is then, I mean, someone's got to say it, you're saying that, that Barack Obama, Michelle Obama, and the two girls are all cloned ancient Egyptians. Absolutely. And you want the kicker? Give me the kicker. Now, I told you that this whole thing was fomenting a space war using an asteroid. Well, and I told you that the god was a ten and their Satan was Apophis. Mm -hmm. Well, I show the news article as to uh, which asteroid we're worried about. Uh, March 2nd of this year, an asteroid nearly hit our planet. It came between the Earth and the moon, just as I had predicted months before on my radio show. It, uh, an asteroid came on March 2nd. They did not see it coming three days before it, it almost hit the planet. But they said, well, this wasn't the one we're worried about. The one we're worried about is called Apophis. And it comes from a group of near-Earth asteroids known as the Aten. So, <laughs> so far tonight, Freeman, you've predicted the Third World War mm -hmm. next month. Mm -hmm. And the Earth is going to be hit by uh, an asteroid? Or that it's going to be a near miss? It actually comes on Friday the 13th, <laughs> 2029. And they're trying to figure out right now how to stop it. So, we'll all be at war anyway, won't we? Yeah, well... Well, is it going to last that long, from t 2009 to 2029? It's all an excuse. It's all That's an excuse to get the space war going. Now, Werner von Braun says that what we're doing is fighting extraterrestrials and that they are not malevolent. So he says that the Earthlings are actually fighting the good aliens from coming here and rescuing humanity, is basically what Werner von Braun's saying. You mean what he did say? Yeah, yeah, what he did Unless say. Unless he's been uh, cloned as well. Channeling, it? yeah, exactly. Or channeling. So <laughs> I can't imagine that any world war in the 21st century is going to last 20 years. Is no, it, so is it going no. to be a short, sharp no, the, shock? It's, it's, yeah, what it is and is all? just an excuse to, to further the weaponization of space. Uh, they're not even thinking the meteors or the asteroids going to hit us in 2029, just that they have to be able to be ready for it. So... No, but the odds of the asteroid coming, being named after the Satan of Akhenaten, who the clone of our president, just might well be, <laughs> is too much for me. You okay, see? well, we, we've got ten minutes left. In that ten minutes, I mean, what are, you, what are your predictions? You know, you've given us these predictions, which are pretty dire and depressing, really. Yeah. Well, I mean, this war, what kind of form will it take? Well, this war is going to be very strange because they now have godlike powers. Uh, when, they, when they started CERN, now realize CERN's logo is 666 with a hyperdimensional portal. Uh, that is their logo. They have Shiva, the god of destruction, sitting out front. <laughs> they tried to create a black hole in Switzerland, you know, to find the god particle. Well, in order to understand what this god particle was, they this had to... the Higgs boson, isn't exactly. it? Exactly. And they had to create uh, a new system, a new internet system, to uh, understand the technology or the, the knowledge that they received from busting into the other dimension. Mm -hmm. And they called this the grid. Now, the grid is 200,000 computers set up on, a, on a direct fiber optic lines. And so now it is the ultimate supercomputer and is absolutely capable of generating holograms. Now, this is admitted on, on, on the grid's website, on CERN's website. That is one of the potentials of the grid. Uh, generating holograms, generating simulated worlds so that they could see what would happen if they did this before it, they actually do it. Uh, things of this nature. Now, uh, Elvis danced with Celine Dion on American Idol as a hologram. Uh, so now we know. Okay, so now we've got that portion. Then you've got your harp facility, which is able to cause earthquakes, floods, weather manipulations. Uh, it can, it's basically a, a, a solar flare from the ground. And so then it manipulates the ionosphere and heats, and, and then they can cause Earth-like pro or God-like problems. You know, people will think it's a major storm or an earthquake or whatever, but they're actually manipulating this. Uh, many people are seeing and feeling the effects of the chemtrails. Uh, these have been very heavy since I've been in England, and, and definitely I've been feeling the aches and bones. Now, one thing's curious about that is that it causes flu-like symptoms. Uh, the, most, the two ingredients reported in, in chemtrails is barium and aluminum. Now, the barium actually makes you show up on an X-band radar. And that was shipped out of Texas right before uh, Katrina hit. Everybody forgot about the X-band radar, and it went up to Alaska to sit next to the harp facility. So now in the chemtrails, you have aluminum and barium. Uh, harp's in a radio transmitter, so the aluminum, you're an antenna. And the barium is a, is a frequency watch uh, you know, radar. 
that can see barium. So now we are tracked and manipulated by the systems in, in Alaska. Uh, so what we're looking at now is a, is a form of war that we've never seen uh, with pulse weapons, space-based lasers. Uh, who remembers when Russia put the giant mirror up in space to radiate the solar waves back onto Earth? Uh, it was going to have the luminescence of 10 moons. And no one said a thing. For three days, they tried to get the fan to open, and they couldn't do it. And they said it burned up in the atmosphere. I'm not so certain. You know, that thing could just be waiting up there to be Goldeneye. Uh, there are many forms of weather that they are going to use that are going to appear as extraterrestrial, that are going to appear as godlike forces. It's going to appear to be the end of the world. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I'm going to say that, you know, that's pretty depressing stuff. I mean, come on, I like to end on a bit of hope. Okay. Where's let's, the hope in the last let's take seven it to hope. minutes? The entire story that I've told you has come to me in miraculous means. I've been left and guided, and my life has seemed to be uh, guided forth by miraculous measures. The right thing just happens at the right time. And what I've discovered is that we are all miraculous. We are all angels. We are all beings that are able to heighten the vibration of planet Earth, heighten and change everything we can. But we're controlled by these sorcerers and their spells. So if you look at a dollar bill, that is a magic spell. You go to any magic grimoire, you'll see a dollar bill in there. That's, it's a typical spell. It's not unusual. Uh, so we are been, they have usurped our divine nature, and we have given our free will consent. And so now through uh, ideas like uh, free man on the land and ideas like money is debt, we're starting to recognize the spells. And we're starting to say, wait a minute, you know, this stuff doesn't make any sense. If you don't speak uh, legalese, you're not going to make it in the courtroom. If you don't understand banking, you're never going to know why an insurance company goes broke. <laughs> and they don't pay anybody. How do they go broke? So we're starting to realize the spells that are controlling us. And once we release ourselves from these, then we become divine. And we really will start to follow a miraculous path that will guide us out of this whole mess. Another dimension. And that's very or possible. Or another density. Too. That is a very possible 2012 scenario. But then the whole world, yeah, you say 2012, but this is 20, 2009. Yeah, I'm talking about now. I'm not talking about a, a density shift. That's a potential for 2012. The light frequency is going to alter as we enter the new great year. But what I'm talking about is just a mental shift in our reason for being. Our reason for being is all messed up. But in the meantime... <laughs> it all requires us to recognize the manipulation that is coming against us and not follow it. So when they're trying to get you angry about certain things, you shouldn't be. Uh, and that we got to recognize that the belief systems have been conditioned into us. And so we're following, you know, a fascist program at this moment. They're just pressing all the buttons. Exactly. But, okay, you know, you might convince me and you might convince the viewers of this channel and you might convince, I don't know, say you convince a million people around the planet. Yeah. That's nothing. Well, there is... nine billion, is it? We're all linked. We really are. There is the concept of the hundredth monkey. There are the ideas of remote viewing, the finding that we're all actually psychic, and these subtle layers Morphic of Morphic resonance. Yes, yes, exactly. The, the soul power that I was discussing, that they are manipulating by using these sigils and such, are our power. And we've given them away. So now we are victims, but only in our own minds. And so as soon as we choose not to be victims then we can, we can show what our fr true free will can accomplish. But if they're frazzling us with uh, directed energy weapons, does it matter what mental state we're in? I believe life is way more miraculous than we think. And we will be guided, we will be led, and, and you'll be amazed at what actually occurs in your own life. We are at a potential now where we could live forever and travel the stars. That's where humanity is right now. So that's our potential. We could, you know, be traveling the universe. For those who don't survive, do you believe in reincarnation? Will they come back? Will they, do the, does the spirit live on? I believe so, yeah. I, I, I personally believe that I traveled here for a reason and a purpose, and I'm happy to be here. Are you from somewhere else? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> I used to think maybe Pallades. I made some jokes about that and then found out all this crazy stuff about Pallades and then met Palladians, and, and there's a long story with Pallades as well. Uh, the, the, you know, the extraterrestrial races seeming to deal with planet Earth right now are Pallades, Sirius, and Alpha Draconis, and I have a whole history of them. Uh, that's all coming out in exopolitics. 
but I believe in the miraculous. I absolutely believe in the miraculous. And everything I've ever done in my work has been miraculous. It's been the universe supplying me. I am not an avid researcher. It is talking to me. And everything that I try to show everybody is a miraculous adventure. Because we are all angels and we are all able to change everything. But we have to break through the conditioning to do so. And that's a hard thing to do. So there is hope. There is absolutely hope. No, not yet. We've got a yeah. minute and a half. You've got a minute and a half to tell us what we should do then. Should we tell people? Okay. Uh, there is a lot of knowledge that we gain, and we end up going through the stages of grief that most find when they find out they're dying. We'll go through anger, depression, through denial and, and frustration until finally acceptance. So everybody's got to walk through that. There's no way around it as far as any psychologist has ever found. When you find that your world is ending, you go through these stages of grief. But you do eventually come to acceptance. And when you get to acceptance, then we get to play. Because that's when you're like, well, you know, <laughs> forget it all. I can just do what I want now. I don't have to worry about the mortgage or the thought of the future. I can now live today because tomorrow doesn't matter. And, and that's when you're freed. And that's the thing we're afraid of, you see. That's the power that the Illuminati has always used against us is this fear of the future. And what we will find is that the future is actually laid out in a beautiful manifest way and that we are actually uh, limiting and hindering that progress by trying to stay in the conditioning. And so now we all go looking for jobs. We try to get a dollar bill. We try to do all of the right things when in actuality we should be out there playing because that's the true nature of the human. Freeman, that's all we've got time for. Thank you to everyone for watching our special two-hour show. And my order queue is not working, so I'll go to my notes. Um, and thanks very much for those who texted, and thanks to my very special guest, Freeman. If you want to learn more, why not visit freemanperspective.blogspot.com or freemantv.com. If you've enjoyed this show, please tell all your friends. Next week, we'll be back with yet another exciting show that might even change your life. Until then, remember, they're watching you, watching us, watching them. Cheerio. Cheerio.